Hey everyone, it's a quick video about how to set up Sublime Text or at least the settings that I uh, currently use. So uh, let's get started. I created a empty installation of Sublime Text, just an empty data folder and I installed the license. And if I start it up, it looks kind of like this, uh, which is quite empty and uh, tiny text. So let's go through improving this. Uh, the first thing I will do is I will uh, set up UI scaling. Uh, you can set up font, but if I change font size from 10 to something large, uh, the font itself in the editor will change, but not the left uh, side uh, sidebar. So the first thing I do, I will set up a UI scale. Uh, in this case, I will double the size, uh, but this does require a restart. So I save the settings and I restart Sublime. And now you notice that everything is much larger and uh, nicer. So the next step would be to still uh, improve the size of the fonts. And uh, the first thing I will do is I, I like a slightly different font. So uh, when, I, when I'm editing code, for example, you know that uh, equal and not equal and uh, usually arrows in C++ and so on, they, they look like this. It's just two characters. Uh, if you install Fira code uh, and you enable some options like anti-aliasing and uh, ligatures, these are my settings. You will notice that this uh, turns into kind of nicer looking text, uh, so I like that. Uh, my next settings, uh, which might be personal, is I like uh, editing in Vim. So I do enable Vim. If you are not, uh, if you don't have the muscle memory for Vim or you don't use it, uh, probably you shouldn't do this. Uh, but for myself, I find this uh, much easier to edit. The next step would be color schemes. I prefer dark color schemes, so I'm, I will say uh, UI cast select theme, and I will say default dark. And I will say UI uh, color scheme, select color scheme, and I will also choose Monokai. So everything uh, becomes this yellowish thing, and uh, you will see here that this is a dark scheme. And the final uh, bits that I do is uh, various uh, UI tweaks. I will go through them uh, one by one. This is, uh, I, I like uh, to have everything on one line. I like my current line to be highlighted so I can quickly see what, what is going on. So this is highlight line. Uh, minimap border is uh, when I go through the minimap, there is this white rectangle around it rather than just it being highlighted uh, with transparent white. I like a block carrot that is around uh, a rectangle around all my characters. And uh, the white space, when I select things, I will see spaces. And uh, I also want to see trailing white space because most of the time I don't need this kind of thing. So uh, those were the UI settings. Uh, for the purposes of this video, maybe I will make the font slightly larger so you can see uh, settings a bit better. I will revert them afterwards. These are the settings uh, purely for your UI. Now let's talk about Rust. If I have Rust right now, you can see I have nice syntax uh, highlighting. However, I, I will not have good autocomplete and uh, I generally I want something like that. And if you go through the documentation, uh, there is a user manual that uh, describes how to install Rust Analyzer for Sublime Text 3. And generally this involves fortnightly uh, running this command. I generally run uh, nightly. So I do Rust up nightly and uh, it's already installed for myself. And uh, after that, it will say enable the language server uh, processor. So let's do that. So from package install, I will install packages, install package control. And then I will go and install a package. And the first package that I will install, it will be LSP. So client implementation for language server protocol. And after that, I will need LSP specifically for Rust. So install package. Rust Analyzer. You can install others. I recommend uh, things like JSON, uh, but for now this should be sufficient. Uh, at this point, even though it's installed, it is not enabled. You can uh, enable it globally or you can enable it in a project. I think globally is generally a good idea. So uh, I will just say that's it. Uh, so now you can see I have nice types. It knows every single thing, like what delay is, what uh, GPIA is, and, and so on. And uh, let's see how autocomplete works. So if I click SPI and the period, you'll see that I only have a macro autocompletion and I don't have actually types. And this uh, caught me up for quite some time. It turns out the reason for this is that I compile using nightly and uh, Rust language analyzer is not the same thing. So what I, I can uh, go, I could go and say uh, for LSP settings, 
I think I can open them from here. LSP preferences. Let's uh, increase the size a little bit. And uh, the interesting bit about here is what command it runs. So if you look in the documentation, somewhere in here it will be a description that says this is how you run the command uh, for various things. So for uh, oh this was not for Rust Analyzer. Never mind. I will not save it and I will restart references for LSP. Uh, great, this is much better. So for LSP, the command default command is its own Rust analyzer. I don't want that. I want to run uh, the nightly build of Rust analyzer. So I'll update the command to say Rust analyzer settings. I will exit. Let's do reload project. And now you'll notice that there, there is a little bit more uh, data information. Like previously, delay did not have any type. Now delay does have type. And if I try what I did before, like SPI, uh, you can see that it tells me that this is an SPI wrapper. And if I, I put period, I get autocomplete. That's it. This is how you get uh, Rust running. And I'm sure there are other settings. I will put a link into a repo that shows my current settings. And uh, you can get this part from it. I hope this was useful. Have a great day.